In creating the stealth hockey stick, our goal was to achieve the next evolution within the one piece category. At 395 grams, it's the lightest stick ever made and by our estimation the best shooting stick ever designed. With the Stealth's patent pending unimold design, hotter blade face, and livelier shaft, we've created the most sophisticated combination of design and materials ever seen in a hockey stick. We feel confident that players across the world will agree that the Stealth will be recognized as the best shooting stick in the game. The design of any product begins with materials, and the Stealth Stick features Easton's proprietary Thermatech manufacturing package, which includes the use of the finest aerospace grade materials to deliver elite level performance to hockey players of all ages. After the materials have thawed and are ready for manufacturing, they go into a cutting phase. What you're looking at are graphite materials that have been cut at 45 degree angles and will be sandwiched together through an ironing process and put through various phases of uh, manufacturing prep. This, is a, this, for instance, is a, is a die cutting machine. You see elements coming out here that will be used for reinforcement of, of a variety of products. Once these graphite materials are removed from the dies, they're actually taken and separated and, and put into uh, a variety of different kit designs that will reference the specific product they're turning into. Uh, this, in, this is inclusive of uh, all of our die cut patterns as well as uh, different methods of cutting that will be more specific to shaft manufacturing, which is what you're looking at here. These are a variety of kits that will uh, soon become shafts. The design specific kits are kept in a temperature controlled area until they're ready for rolling as we call it. So what you see there is actually a shaft that's ready to, to go to the oven uh, and be cooked and become a semi finished product that, that will be assembled and become a stealth. The oven and the cure process are actually critical to the manufacture of our, of our shafts and as such I can't really go into great detail uh, about how we make these sticks in, in, the, in this oven process. However, I can say that, that elements of pressure, temperature and cure length combine to, to allow for the best shaft you can find on the market. Um, the reason I can't really share it is it's kind of like a recipe. Uh, there are many companies out there that make product but there's only one blue ribbon winner. Uh, there's only one uh, grandma's chili and we'd like to think uh, we have that status currently. Once the cured shafts come out of the oven, we have the metal elements again called the mandrels which are removed and the semi-finished shafts are actually just uh, trimmed and taken through a QC process that ensures that the, the shafts meet our weight and flex criteria. Uh, it's basically one last check to make sure that what we put in is what we got out. The blade process is a little different. Cut materials are, are brought into a preform area where uh, the graphite and the die cut uh, materials are actually wrapped around a foam element and they create the, the, the soft shape of the blade or the soft shape form of the blade that will be put into a mold. What you're seeing here is actually the formation of a Z-carbon component. Unfortunately, we're not at liberty to share with you exactly how uh, a stealth uh, preform comes together. Uh, suffice it to say, it does go into an open mold uh, along with the, with the shaft element and it is uh, taken through our p patented unimold technology uh, to create the lowest kick point found in the stick. Okay, now you see the, our Z-carbon part has come out of a mold. It's our hardened as the resin in the material has flowed and cooked within the mold. Uh, one of the benefits of, of our aluminum molds and these, these custom patterns is that we can maintain the consistency in terms of weight and shape, which is a big draw for our elite level athletes. I mean, what you're looking at here is essentially uh, the components that, that become the sticks for the likes of Joe Sackick and Steve Eisenman and the rest. Again, as I mentioned, uh, we really weren't at liberty to share with you exactly how the, the assembly or the combined elements of, of the stealth come together. However, what you're looking at right now is, is our extensive uh, screening area within our manufacturing facility. Um, that is actually a semi-finished stealth stick ready to be, uh, ready to have art applied to it. Uh, like most of our sticks, there, there are three coats or three different colors that, that are applied to uh, the stealth design. Easton is one of very few companies left that actually uses silk screening as a graphic application element. We've managed to master this process and find that the registration is actually world class. The benefits of the labor intensive silk screening process are actually found uh, in, in the final piece. Uh, you don't have the, the, the chipping, the, the peeling, or the removal of, of decals as you find uh, with other sticks. Uh, certainly Chris Drury doesn't seem to be complaining as these are his World Cup samples. 
no Eastern product is qualified for manufacturing until it goes through a rigorous set of test protocols at our facility. One of the standard test pieces we have is what's called an ultimate strength apparatus. We can basically apply a steady force to a shaft to gauge uh, what, what the overall strength of it is or what the flex value of it is. One of the most aggressive tests we've uh, recently implemented at our facility is one that, that tests impact strength. Um, with the recent concerns coming from the National Hockey League, we wanted to be certain that the quality of our product we're putting out there was uh, up to snuff. And naturally, we'd like to actually compare uh, to some of our competition to see, see where we stand versus uh, competitive designs in the marketplace. Now, this is a somewhat comparable product in terms of uh, weight and design to, to what we put out on a daily basis in the one-piece category. You see clearly the stick didn't hold up to the to the impact force applied to it. And uh, like most composites, once it, it fails initially, it leads to catastrophic failure, which uh, looks pretty spectacular on TV, but is not really what we aim for with our stick designs. Uh, what you're looking at here is, is actually our stick going through the same process. Again, uh, a, a force is dropped onto the middle of the shaft, which is held in two places. And uh, just to make the point here, uh, we're going to drop the weight on it twice. By withstanding this initial force, you can see the stick is not at all damaged and can play on. The testing you've seen thus far is what we refer to as static. We basically have fixtures and there are, there are, there are measured forces or weights uh, being applied uh, to the product and we gauge the basic strength or the flex of, of, of the stick. Um, a test we have in place that, that really helps us gauge the, the playability or the play strength of a stick is what is affectionately referred to as a robotsky. It's basically a, a dynamic puck shooting machine where the stick is attached to it and uh, an arm swings the stick at 100 miles an hour uh, whereby we test the overall strength, flex, torque and uh, basic uh, durability of the product before we put it out to market. In creating this test what we really wanted to do was attempt to replicate uh, the dynamics of a stick on the ice as much as possible. So that meant uh, having a preload of certain inches and uh, a strike point of a certain point. Uh, so it's a very, very exact process we go through. Again, as you can see, this, uh, the arm of this machine is swinging at 100 miles an hour, which means the stick's going along with it. Just to put it in perspective, there, there really aren't too many hockey players, uh, none actually, that can, that can swing at that rate. I don't believe there are any human beings that can swing at that rate.